Hey again, this is Joey from ESC Plus, and today for our ESC odds tool update, we are going to go through what the tool is suggesting who will qualify from semifinal one, which is only a little over three weeks away. So I'm going to go through the running order of semifinal one and let you know if the tool indicates that the song will qualify and what I think about it. So starting at the top, we have Cypress kicking off semifinal one, and I think this is a pretty easy one. So we know that Tomta is coming to the contest this year, building on the momentum that Eleni left in Lisbon. Uh, she's working with a really great team, and I think the song is already a big hit with fans. I don't see any real scenario where this doesn't qualify. Um, I'm not really sure that it will be the winner of semifinal one, but I think um, Cypress qualifying for the final is a pretty short thing. In second running order, we have Montenegro. Um, so our tool gives this roughly a 7% chance of qualifying, which I think might be a little generous. Um, we did see a revamp of this song after it was selected by Montenegro and it, you know, was a nice improvement, but I don't see this qualifying and the tool agrees. Um, Third is Finland. We have uh, Darud. Um, the tool has this and that's not qualifying and I actually have to agree here as well. I don't think the viewing public really has shown um, a warm reception to a DJ act on the Eurovision stage and I think that um, Finland has really struggled in some of the semifinals. I was surprised last year that Sara Alto um, really only narrowly, narrowly qualified for for the grand final rather than um, sort of sailing through. I just don't see um, them getting the support that they need from the public on this to 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 qualify. So I'm gonna agree with our tool here as well. Um, then next up we have Poland and the girls of Tulia are really charming and wonderful, but our tool does not um, see it as a qualifier. And, and that is, consistent with a lot of the odds that are out there. And I am gonna go out on a limb and disagree with the tool here. I think that Poland will benefit from the diaspora um, and the, the sort of the colorful nature of this act is going to um, make it very memorable with, with viewers. So although the tool has it as not qualifying, it's on my list of qualifiers. Next up is Slovenia. And for me, this is a pretty easy one as well. Um, the tool and I both agree that um, this is going to be a qualifier and we will see uh, the song Sebi in, in the final. I think it's a, a memorable, nice song and it's got a nice running spot and to create uh, a real impact. Moving on, uh, next up is Czech Republic. And I think that this is going to surprise people and be um, a qualifier that um, goes through and actually does pretty well in this semifinal. I think Lake Malawi have um, done a great job with grabbing hold of the, the viewing audience of this song within the first 15 to 20 seconds. And that's really what um, is going to help them be successful. It's memorable, it's edgy, uh, it's going to play really well with the younger, younger crowd. Um, so it's funny to think that maybe the Czech Republic would have chose Space uh, Sushi over this song, but uh, I think uh, Lake Lomuali is going to do the Czech Republic proud and bring them back to the final for the second year in a row. Um, after that, we have Hungary, and we've got here, um, the our odds are showing that it does not qualify, and I'm going to say that I agree here, although this is not consistent with a lot of um, other betting odds that are out there. Um, I just... I'm a little torn on this one. I think this is probably on the cusp, but I think um, a lot of times the odds may be a little bit overstated if there's like a known quantity or a returning Eurovision star. So I see this as being um, maybe a shock non-qualifier. Um, then after that, um, there's Serbia. Um, and I think Navina has a great fan base here, but we, we see this as not qualifying as well. Um, I think it's going to maybe get lost a little bit with being back-to-back -back with the non-English language ballad in the running order. Um, but, you know, um, it could it could just as well qualify um, from that strong fan base and the fact that it's a beautiful song. Um, after that, there's going to be Belarus with Xena. Um, and 
I think the consensus here is that this is not going to be a qualifier. I think it's going to surprise a lot of people, though. I do think it'll have um, some strong public support. I just don't see the juries going for a song like this. Um, and that's why the, I think the tool is indicating that it does not qualify. And I will agree with it here. Um, so next up would be Belgium. So we've got Elliot here with um, his song. And I think this is going to be another close call this year for, for Belgium, for sure. They're repeating the, the what we saw last year with Senec and the year before with Blind Show, sort of the dark, mid-tempo ballad. And I don't know if that on its own is going to be enough. I think I'm giving Elliot the benefit of the doubt here because he's got that young um, male vocalist uh, piece that is really like not present in this semifinal. So I think, you know, he will get the male heartthrob spot, if you will. So I'm going to say that Belgium's a qualifier, but I'm, I'm, I think we're going to be surprised that, um, that it's not going to be an easy sail through for them. After that, we have Georgia. And this again is another one. I mean, Oto is a great guy and I feel like he's doing a lot of what he he does with a lot of passion, but this is pretty much, I've seen the fan reactions to this song and um, we're not gonna see this song qualify. After that, we have Australia. And um, again, I would agree with our odds here that this is a qualifier. I think Kate is really capable of creating um, that uh, a moment that's necessary for this song, the, the combination of the voice and the the, the staging is going to go a long way. And, uh, you know, again, the three minute mark is really, the, you know, what she's got to make an impression on people. I think the, you know, what the song lends itself to combined with the love from the juries for Australia is going to put her in the final. After Kate, we've got our Icelandic friends, Hattari, and I think the master plan is going according to schedule and they will move on to the final just as planned. So there's no, it's useless to resist them, I think. Um, well, honestly, I, 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 this is one of my favorites for the year and I, I see it being a, a short qualifier. After Iceland, we have Estonia um, and Victor Krohn. I, I think this is another real questionable call and the tool seems to agree with me for that matter, placing it right on the edge of qualifying and not qualifying. I think, you know, this is a, you know, sort of a middle of the lane, Scandi pop, typical Eurovision type song. Um, it will resonate with people. But one thing I noticed in looking this up was that I'm so surprised at how Estonia has done in, in the semis the past couple of years. I mean, last year they, they qualified, but they placed seventh in the jury vote, um, although they placed third in the public vote. And we all know what happened to Verona the year before um, with the juries putting it 17th, um, despite um, coming in sixth with the fans. So I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm a little worried that there's going to be... Um, the public is not going to be enough to carry this and, and the juries won't be there for Estonia. So, um, but I, I have it in as, as, as qualifying at the moment. Um, so next up after that is Portugal. And this is an interesting one. I mean, our tool really places this pretty high, but I have to say, I think part of that is because of um, our tool being skewed a little bit towards Spain and Portugal where, where the majority of our readers are. Um, but I don't see um, the jury is not respecting this entry, entry from Conan. I think that this is a real forward, forward thinking song and it's got great visuals and I don't think um, it, it can be ignored. So um, if, if uh, Festival League can soon is anything to go by, this is going to qualify. Um, next up, we have Greece. Um, like Cyprus, I think this is the closest thing we have in the semifinal to a short bet. Um, I actually think Katrin can potentially win this semifinal, especially with coming next to last in the running order. So I'm just going to sit back and not stress about Greece making the final this year because I think this is, a, this is a done deal. And then finally, there is San Marino. So San Marino has got the last place of the song and a last place in the running order. And it's pretty rare 
um, in Eurovision semifinals for the song that closes the show to actually not advance. And um, the statistics are definitely in San Marino's favor. Um, so there is, um, you know, a lot of speculation over whether this is the year San Marino returns to the grand final. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that our tool agree, agree with our tool and say that uh, San Marino will make it in. And I hope I don't live to regret that. I'll be rooting for Sarhat for sure. So um, just to recap, um, our tool has placed Cyprus in first, Iceland in second, Portugal in third, Greece in fourth, Belgium in fifth, Slovenia in sixth, seventh, San Marino, eighth, Australia, ninth, Czech Republic, and tenth, Estonia. And I actually am going to say that I'm going to disagree with the tool in one instance um, on the subject of Estonia. I'm going to swap out Estonia and in for Poland there um, in terms of my own personal predictions. But the great thing about the tool is that we are we developed a, um, a methodology for building in different types of data, the odds that are published by the various bookies, Spotify streams, YouTube views, um, historical voting patterns. So it's a fun thing to watch as we now are gearing up to the first semifinal in Tel Aviv. And while um, if you were to look at the, the final um, odds for to win your vision as a whole, we've pretty much started to reach the, the kind of the steady state there where Netherlands looks like it's going to be at the top for at least until we get to rehearsals. So this is really fun to look at this. Um, you can access the tool by clicking on the ESC plus odds banner on the website. You can also get to the link in the comments below and you can take a look at the article on the website. Um, also in the link below that will talk a little bit more about um, the, the, the thinking behind a lot of these predictions. So once again, make sure you um, let us know what you think. Do you agree with the tool um, or do you think it's crazy? Let us know what your predictions are. We'd love to see them um, in the comments section below. Make sure to subscribe and press the notification bell so you can get all of the updates that are coming from ESC+. And thanks for watching.